joining us now in his second year with the Cowboys on the on-time experts hot seat, on-time experts air conditioning and plumbing, same-day service guaranteed. It's wide receiver Brandon Cooks here on The Fan. And a good afternoon to you, sir. How you doing? Good afternoon, fellas. It's always uh, great to be able to come out and hang out. So good to see you all. Especially after a practice like that. Seemed like you guys were in sync definitely today. How did it feel out there? It felt great. You know, second day I passed. First day, obviously, kind of get your feet wet a little bit. Second, second day, you settle in. So you felt the competition. You felt the pass popping. Uh, but I think it was a great overall competitive day. I mean, Dak was just lacing yeah. him in there, too. Yeah, he was. I mean, that's what you do. That's what red zone is all about, right? Those windows get a little tighter. Uh, so you got to make those uh, contested catches, those pinpoint throws. And I think today was a good example of that. How are things different without C.D. Lamb? I mean, let's just be honest. C.D. is <laughs> one of the best receivers in the league for a reason, right? Um you know, but at the end of the day, you know, we out here grinding and understanding what he has going on. So we're trying to better ourselves individually and as a team. And whenever he gets back, we know uh, special things going to happen. Did your role change at all without having CD here? You just kind of move up the, the pecking order? No, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I think at the end of the day, it's just going out here, being able to get some of those reps that maybe you're usually not able to get because, you know, our guy 8A is going to get them. But to be able to show that, uh, you know, all of us can do some some things that we're not necessarily able to do all the time when he's out here. So I think it's a positive from that standpoint because you build that rapport with your quarterback. Um, so I say I've had some opportunities to be able to do that and capitalize on that. How are you feeling about the rest of the wide receiver room right now? Like Tolbert making yeah. plays. I know he's been yeah. your guy. You've kind of yeah. taken him under your wing, but Jalen Brooks yeah. as well. Yeah, Billy no, I, Johnson. Yeah, T. Yeah. Billy. Yeah, I think the whole receiver room, I think you've been seeing throughout camp, everyone making plays here and there. And like I said, from top to quote-unquote bottom, I don't like using that word. But guys are making plays. Guys are showing up. And that's what it's all about, camp, training camp is competing. How much more has there been added into the offense? How different is the offense than maybe it was this time last year? You know, I think from the standpoint, we like to say – I think we're perfecting this offense uh, the second year in coach McCarthy offense is more so now we perfecting it and what I mean by that is just the little nuances the little things that you that goes into a play uh, as far as difference uh, I just would say we're perfecting it it's Brandon Cooks here with us on the fan okay so coming off the Green Bay game are you the yeah. kind of guy that likes to stew with that and get mad about it and use it as motivation or do you move on how do you treat that I think uh, you know it's two things obviously two folds you you got to move on from the aspect that last year is last year but at the same time you got to remember that uh, because every single game I feel like we got to treat it as a playoff game uh, to be able to put our mindset, uh, you know, blessed we get there, we got to go take care of business. Uh, we start that earlier, that mind frame earlier. Uh, so that's the only thing I would say. You use it as fill in the off season, but now it's a new year. Last year was last year. Let's keep it pushing. The topic of culture came yeah. up a lot this off season, and you've had success in a variety of different locations. You're going to year two now here. The Cowboys' playoff disappointment, not obviously all on you, but it's been going on for 30 years. So have you noticed anything that is different that stands out when it comes to playing for the Cowboys versus playing anywhere else? Uh, the biggest difference, I, I would have to say, is we as players, we really got to do a great job of that cliche of tuning out the noise, yeah. right? That's just the truth. It's the most viewed franchise in the world, and that's a blessing. That's a great thing. you got to take that advantage of that. But at the same time, being able to learn how to tune out that noise and focus on the task at hand, not to believe your own uh, press clippings, and stay focused on uh, what we got in front of us. What was the uh, what was the, the, the personal focus this offseason for you? Anything in, in terms of, I mean, you're looking lean, machine. You're still fast as can be out there. Uh, yeah, what was the dedication? The, the, the dedication was just to – Make sure I come back and, and, and it doesn't look like I lost a step, right? And uh, in my mind, it's like come on early on in the season to be able to make plays, be a playmaker for this team and not, uh, you know, be, quote, unquote, you know, the middle of the season or the end of the season. Like let's come out, hit the ground running uh, and set that tone that we all coming at you. How much time did you spend in the backyard? You know, this year we uh, we did most of the throwing in Dallas whether it be Salina or SMU. Okay. And then, obviously, the Oregon trip in, in the summertime uh, right before camp. Yeah, is that a Lake Oswego? Yeah, that's Lake Oswego, Westland, you know, that little nice. little bunch over there. You know, uh, but it was great because we had a bunch of the guys out. I think, gosh, about 20 guys. Uh, 
But to be able to have that, you know, that, that field work, but at the same time being able to build that camaraderie off the field was special. How was, that all... your, was that your uh, thing that you, you organized being no, from, from the Northwest? Exact, it was always Dak's thing that you organized, okay. but, you know, he kind of leaned on me this year to be able to play a part in that, to take some off his shoulder. So, yes, we had it in Oregon because that's where I live in the off season. So you had guys standing at my house, guys standing at another house, and then we working out at Nike. So it was kind of hand-in-hand hand with that, with that. Now, I lived in Portland for a while. I know how yeah. bad traffic can get where you yeah. tempted to take them up in the plane and just shoot over <laughs> to the campus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. That traffic is still bad, by the is way. It? But uh, for the most part, everything was – Relatively uh, centered, you know. What kind of Northwest recreation do you like to do in the summer? Is it fishing? Is it uh, mountain biking? It, it, it's is hiking. It? It's yeah. hiking. You know, just all the different waterfalls that you can, you can jump into. I think uh, the hiking, as you know, uh, is unbeatable in the Northwest in the summertime. How are you feeling about the pack two? <laughs> I'm still upset about that. <laughs> I, I I don't know how we get left out when we have some of the best you know programs of, and you know in the, what was the Pac-12, but you know. It is what it is. Where would you like to see Oregon State go from here? I just would have loved to see that it never got broken up. Yeah. That, that's first. Uh, two, I think I think they're doing a smart job by keeping the name um, and then, you know, see where it goes from there. Brandon yeah. Cook's here with you on, on 105 Through the Fan. Okay, I don't want to stir anything up, but I thought, you know, maybe you were a guy that would get more than 81, uh, uh, you know, targets last year. Did that, did that number seem low to you? To be very honest with you, I, I didn't even realize how many targets I had until you just said that. Um, you know, for me, the competitive nature for me is like, of course, I want to be involved more because I know what I can do and help mm-hmm. our team win. But when you're winning and your target's low, you know, I don't want to be a distraction, nor should you be a distraction because at the end of the game, I mean, at the end of the day, the name of the game is win. Yeah. But the g- games that we lose or whatever the case may be, that's where in my mind, like, you know, could I have helped more? Um, but for my mindset, keep pushing. You know, let them see that you open. The ball is going to come, and when it does, just be ready when your numbers go. The professionalism, the positivity. I think when it's when it's Brandon Cooks in those words. I mean, there's nobody better than you, man. I mean, so props for for staying locked in like that. Did something click with the offense or for you in the second half of last year? It did seem like that production increase as the year went on. I think it was just more about uh, once again. I think showing on tape that you open, mm-hmm. and you know that continued to build that rapport with me. Obviously, it was our first year, and building that trust, trust from the quarterback to receiver is so huge. So I think that second half of the season, you started to see that and continue to build that through the season, the off season, um, and hopefully we continue to pick up on that. It's Brandon Cooks with us here on the fan. Uh, what are you getting into out here? Are you playing a little video games? Are you playing any NCAA? What do you do out here? <laughs> I'm going to have to wait for the NCAA once we get back home. But, honestly, the TV's off. Uh, I'm all about just going to practice, eat, recover, watch film. My family's out here just for a little bit. But even then, it's like you love them. I love my kids. But camp is about locking in. So, you know, they took off. Uh, and they went back home. I see you. Uh, you know, I see you at the end. <laughs> Loving to death, but Dad got to sacrifice some time. Absolutely, right now. you got to focus. So yeah. you're not. You don't get into the Olympics at all during the Olympic year. Um, when the track, when the sprints come on, okay. I'll, I'll make sure I check it out. That's so next week, I think next is, week is, is when we get that. When we get that. Yeah, I like but that. I like the the swimming. Yes. I, I tell myself, like, man, that 50 meter freestyle. I don't know why I think this, but. I think I could compete. <laughs> that's, that's it. I know they would probably humble me, but I don't know. Like, if I can jump out farther than them to start off with and then get a start, maybe that's my chance. I mean, you have good reason to be optimistic. I doubt you lost many races. Yeah. Now, did you ever sprint against any of these guys, or how, how far Ooh. did you take track? Funny thing enough is that Ry Benjamin, um, you know, I was, able, I was fortunate enough uh, to, to sprint in the summertime a couple of years ago. He's the 400-meter hurdler. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully he should win it. Um, but to be able to sprint with those guys is like, okay, there's fast, and then there's just different speed and, like, the, how they make it look so effortless. So I was able to spend a summer with them at UCLA uh, in the off season one summer, uh, and I was definitely humble. Do you, you still think you're the fastest guy on the team? Yeah, which receiver's challenging you right now? I mean, Turpin, obviously. Turpin's, Anybody Tur- talking, though? Anybody talking no, about you it? You know, the funny thing enough, we don't talk about it. It's just like one of those things that we all so confident in our right. own speed – that if you ask, it's always going to be, oh, me, or, you know, that person sure. going to say him. or And that's what you love about it. But we won't be getting no races. I said this last year. I'm not racing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> last thing you want to do is pull a hand <laughs> doing that. So I saw today, actually, uh, it's recirculating the video of Andre Johnson and Cortland Finnegan mm-hmm. getting after yeah. it. Oh, okay? what a fight. Yeah. What a now, moment. Now, oh, today, great fight. we got our first training camp yeah. scuffle with rookie yeah. Kalen Carson, who I love. That dude's a dog. 
But for you, in your history of playing football, have you ever gone at it with a DB? Has there been anybody that you're like, man, I, I kind of wouldn't mind mixing it up a little bit? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it happens in camp all the time. And, uh, and it's funny enough, you don't never know who, who it is. It's just tempers get high. Uh, you know, you get a little tired out there. You want to slow down, practice yeah. a little bit, so let's fight. But that's what it's all about, right? As long as you're not out there being a fool and stupid about it, it's going to happen. It's a bunch of men that's – you know, compete for a job. And you love to see it. I don't think anyone gets mad about it. Have we had any rookies do some talent show stuff? Anybody impressing you? What did, what did BB do? Because we had BB here. He was thinking about, what did he do song? Hannah Montana? Did he no. do Party in the USA? I, what was his song? I know he, he crushed it. He crushed it? He, okay. he crushed it. Tyler Guy Sweet crushed Caroline. it. Did he? Uh, what did he go with? Uh, uh, Rick James. Uh, but this, so far, this might be the best rookie class I've seen just getting up there singing, okay. no, not being shy about it. All right. We got some yeah, pipes. We yeah. do. I we remember do. Overshone last year had uh, some pipes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he kind of shut, shut, yeah. shut it down a little bit. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that's very good. Now, what is uh, what is what is the rookie right now? That, that any, any hazing? Any jobs nah, that they're having I, to do? We're that's not doing one any thing of that, that I, I've been so fortunate and blessed when I was a rookie. So at least in my room. I passed that down. It's like the biggest thing is, you know, going to pick up food, uh, you know, getting snacks for the room. That, that's about as far as we go in the receiving room and, and really the team. Like, we got so much to focus on. We need these guys. We'll play with them a little bit, um, but not to the aspect of the old days, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, how much has it changed? Like, a year, lot. Your training camp, a lot, man. A lot. I mean, you talking about Rookie Hazen back then, you get your head shaved or Woo. tied up to the goalpost. Uh, ain't none of that going on no more. Man. <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> they don't even have carry ones. pads anymore, do they? No, no. Uh, you know, helmets. I hel- see the helmets. 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 Uh, no, I ain't seen no pads. Most guys want to keep it on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is Micah trying to sumo wrestle everybody in, Man, the, in the locker room? My, what's going my, on? Micah can keep that in China. You know, he, <laughs> we ain't doing none of that out there. <laughs> Jaw strap swinging. <laughs> you've, been, uh, you've been keeping tabs with Gilly? All the, we, I mean, you know, as we talk every day. You guys are be- the besties, you know, man. How's he doing? He doing great. Great. Just staying ready. Uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see where we go from there. All right. All right. You've been here now for one full season. I want to do some teammate superlatives, if all that's right. okay with all you. Right. All right. Who would be, according to Brandon Cooks, the funniest guy on the team? T. Or Billy. T. Billy? Yeah. He seems like he's, he's a personality T. guy. Billy. Okay. So, he, yeah. so it is a receiver. I was yeah, wondering, would it be a receiver? Yep. Can he, he, he's showing out having a good can. All right. Point, point receiver room. Point can, for the receiver room. Yeah. Can he really go, or is he just making a name for himself in camp? Oh, I T mean, Billy? people forget. Yeah. T. Billy, what was it? I think it was a five-game stretch. With the Chargers. He was averaging 50 yards a catch yeah. or something like that. Uh, he can go. Right. He can go. I right. really believe that. That's a guy who can take the yeah. top off. Yeah. And it takes one to know one. And yeah, that's no Brandon doubt. Cooks right no there. Doubt. All right, Brandon, uh, who is the biggest trash talker on the team? Oh, we got to go with probably Micah or J. Uh, J. Lou. Okay, we I heard, heard today. Yeah, I heard about the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm on Ross Brown. Yeah, yeah, I heard yeah, about that. Yes. I heard about that. All right, a uh, guy you'd most trust to babysit your kids. Oh, Jalen Tobert. Oh, that was quick. No question. I mean, he low key did it before in in a sense. Like, okay. you know, he stayed in my house a couple times in Oregon, obviously for the receiver trip, but came out before. And there's no doubt a couple times I done forgot, like, go ahead, JT, you got. And I'm going, you know, to go run an errand or something That's like that. That's awesome. And there's no. There's no second guessing with that guy. Do you remember what the age was of the kids, like when they got you got comfortable leaving them? Because I just I've got a five month old daughter. I've oh, not yeah, left no. her with anybody yet. No, sir, and not that early. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that my early. son is <laughs> sorry, well, getting ready to be four. Our thing is, I want to be able to explain a sentence. Sure. And so whenever he was able to articulate what was going on, uh, was good with that. But be honest with you, it's only been our our my mom or her mom. But or, then, J- or Jalen or, Tolbert. Or JT. <laughs> I'll have to get his number. He might have yeah. to babysit <laughs> Wise beyond his years, Jalen Tolbert. All right, who's the guy you'd least trust to babysit your kids? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to go with, man, that's a good one. I'm going to have to go with, mm, mm, yeah, Michael Parsons. <laughs> yeah. I was, he, was distracted. he gets well, distracted well, too okay. easy. He'll have him on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. He'll have him cutting the Eddie know what it, Next audio. thing you know, he, you know, he on his podcast or something, and the kids, the kids out there in the around. backyard yeah. swimming. <laughs> kids are, kids are going to be podcasting sumo wrestlers <laughs> after that, babysitting. <laughs> Shadow boxing yeah. in the background. Yeah. All right, the teammate Brandon Cooks would most like to have his back in a bar fight. Oh, my gosh, Tyler Smith. What a, what a monster. <laughs> Strong as hell. Dog. Dog. I, I might not have to fight. <laughs> I don't think you will. Yeah, I might not have yeah, to you fight. Probably won't. Tyler get him. Smith. Go, go get him, Tyler. No doubt. Is he, is, he, is he the guy on the team that impresses you most in the weight room? Who would be that guy? In the weight room? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I would, I would have to say him, no doubt. Now that now that maybe Tyron Smith is gone, you yeah, know, yeah. the big man's <laughs> left the room. Uh, okay, the guy on the team that's most likely to invite teammates over for barbecue, maybe, oh. a, little, maybe a little cook out of the uh, crib. Dak. That's Dak. Dak. That's Dak. I think he, he does it already all yeah. the time. Yeah. Does he cook himself? or? Uh, I mean, yeah. there's a video swirling around there that he on the grill or something like that. But I'm, it probably been one of those moments like, hey, get a video of me on the grill, but not really doing that. <laughs> <What> did, you, <laughs> did, did you see his dance moves? That video oh, that he was hitting it. He was Whoa, hitting it. Like, little yeah. yes. <laughs> he was having fun. Well, I was just going to ask you who's your favorite guy on the team to make fun of, but maybe it's Dak. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it to Dak because he can, he can dish it, but he can also take it. Okay, and then finally, oh. did you know that Mike Zimmer was a bit of a yes. Riz God? Yes. You knew yeah, that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, that's known throughout the league. Yeah, no, Zim, Everyone that, pretty much knows. Zim, Zim is a dog, and he's a uh, <laughs> – yeah, yeah, it's Zim, no doubt. You ever ben, give him a fist bump for that one? Just say, hey, you I know, game respect game? Just respect. You know, I'm going to have to say what's going on, but Attaboy. respect, big guy. <laughs> if you could catch one pass from any NFL quarterback in history, not one that you've played with, mm-hmm. though. Who, who was Joe Montana. Montana. No He's question. your guy. I mean, growing up a Niner fan, Joe yeah. Montana. It, yeah, Joe Montana. Yep. Troy Aikman second, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, no yeah, doubt. You there know, you go. Being here, yeah. Stop yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, look, I'm just an honest man. No, I grew I, up I think riding my bike to UOP, watching, you know, those guys at training camp. Dude, so. okay, I actually have a question. For, I don't know if we're going to get a chance to talk to Dak. I was going to give him this as a response, a canned quarterback mm-hmm. answer for when he inevitably gets asked about the whereabouts of C.D. Lamb yeah. during the holdout. Maybe you can pass this along to him. Whenever Dak gets asked about this, Dak should respond, I don't know exactly where he is right now. I just know he's open. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. I'm going to give it to him. He's open. I'm going to give it to him. So if you hear it on his next interview. We can thank That's B all Coach. you. We can no, thank not, me. not me. That's, <laughs> That's all you. On the On Time Experts Air Conditioning and Plumbing Hot Seat, Brandon Cooks, thank you yeah. so much for joining us on the fan. Appreciate it, Sean. Salute. All right.